Our Denver Broncos training camp position preview kicks off with a cornerback position. We take a look at Patrick Sertan, Damari Mathis. Is there anybody else that could come up and contend for that cornerback two spot? Also, what does the depth look like behind everybody else? You're going to get that and much more on today's brand new episode, Locked on Broncos. You are locked on Broncos, your daily Denver Broncos podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, Broncos country? Welcome into a brand new episode of Locked On Broncos, your daily Denver Broncos podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Training camp is fast approaching here in just a couple of weeks time. And Broncos country, we're going to take a look at the cornerback position, every player, every angle possible on today's episode of the show. Thank you so much, Broncos Country, for tuning in, making us your first listen of the day every single day, free and available everywhere you get your podcast and audio format, or whether you're watching on YouTube, make sure you subscribe or follow for free so you never miss out on a day's worth of Broncos news, content coverage, and more. I'm your host, as always, Cody Rourke, Broncos reporter from Mile High Sports, joined alongside, as always, by my co-host, Sarah Bettinger, site expert, predominantly orange. Dot com. Our training camp position previews continue here. For all the everydayers, yesterday's episode of the show, we took a look at the quarterback position with Russell Wilson, Jarrett Stidham, Jarrett Guarantano, Ben DiNucci. So if you missed that, make sure you go check that out so you don't miss any of the angles that we touched on heading into training camp. We're going to focus on cornerback, the position that is responsible for taking the football away from quarterbacks who throw it in their direction here. And I, I think ideally, Sarah, going into training camp, you look at skill player positions, cornerback, wide receiver. These are some of the top positions that have the most guys, the most bodies during a training camp practice. And with the NFL's new rules that you can now make cuts after the third and final preseason game, Denver could go with a 90-man roster the entire way up until that preseason finale at home against the Los Angeles Rams. But man, cornerback, I feel really good about their overall depth right now with the number of guys that they have at that position right now on paper. Yeah, this is a position group that I think some people in Broncos country might have concerns about due to the youth. But I think for you and me, I, I believe this is one of the stronger position groups on the team. This is a position group where you've got young guys. You've got your best players on rookie contracts. You've got guys coming up through the wings. You've got a couple solid veterans out there. And you've got arguably the premier superstar in the NFL at one of the most important positions here in Pat Sertan. So, Cody, looking at this group, Patrick Sertan, Damari Mathis, Riley Moss, Kaywan Williams, of course, Isang Bassey, Jaquan McMillan, Art Green, a guy coming up through the ranks there, Delonte Hood, Tremont Smith, a free agent acquisition. Then you've got Fion Hicks as well. There's so many different players at this position group that I think you look up and down the list here, you might even start to wonder, do the Broncos have some trade value at at this position group and and some guys that maybe hey teams look around the way. I'm still surprised as we sit here today Cody I'm still surprised that that Vic Fangio didn't sign Isang Bassey as much as we know he liked him when he was uh in Denver so now that Vic is in Miami and I don't know it, was, it didn't happen but obviously I think the Broncos have good depth here I think they have strong young players at this position group and I think there's potential even for it to get better than it already is, right? You've already got quality play last year from Sertan and Damari Mathis. Even cutting Ronald Darby this offseason, I feel like almost this position group got better. And I think a question, too, something I have. Look, Javante Williams over the weekend had his camp with Sertan and mentioned something about who he's been rehabbing with. He mentioned he's still rehabbing with Ronald Darby. So part of me is wondering here, Sarah, though, like, could there be a scenario at some point this season, right? Whenever Darby's ready, Considering, you know, where he's at with his ACL, I'm not sure of the timeline. There hasn't been really anything there. Could Denver maybe look at adding him once the regular season comes around? I, mean, I think it's always a possibility. He's a veteran guy. You never know how things are going to shake out. You mentioned the youth at the position. I think it's maybe something to ponder here, considering that, yeah, he had the contract. They obviously had to free up cap space. That was more of a cap move than it was like, hey, we want to move on from Ronald Darby. That was more of a money issue, money situation there. So I think that if there is mutual interest, there could be some tie that brings Ronald Darby back into the mix here with the Broncos. But, I mean, you're, you're taking a look at some of these young guys and you're hoping, okay, hey, we talked about Damari Mathis during this offseason about, hey, he had a really good rookie year. He exceeded our expectations. Now he's projected to be the starter. Can he continue his rise that he has? And, look, he's a, he's a fundamental technician. I'm excited to see a little bit more of him this upcoming season. 
And then you mentioned, you know, we talked about maybe a, a guy on yesterday's, you know, a couple of days ago, a lock on Broncos. We talked about non-starters to keep an eye on. Jaquan McMillan, who can play inside, he can play outside. I think it gives the Broncos, if you have guys who are flexible in that situation, like we talk about positional versatility, it gives you options that you can maximize your personnel in different groups. And I think it, it maybe gives you a clear vision, right? Once again, there we go. Take a, take a drink. You hear the word vision. It gives you a vision maybe, okay, if we suffer an injury here, we know we can maneuver some guys around. We can take some pieces, move this guy here and put this guy here, and it still gives us the ability to have the best players on the field. I, that's where I look at when I look at the Broncos. But I think specifically, one of the things we really have to look at when we talk about cornerback, everyone's focused on, Sertan and Mathis. And I think a question we can throw out there is, hey, can they maybe emerge this season as one of the NFL's top young cornerback duos? That's something I want to see here from them. I think they have the tools to be able to do that, but obviously there's a lot of production that needs to happen. And, and I think Damari Mathis set a really good standard last year for where he was at as a rookie. And Sertan, we obviously know where he's at. I don't think people are going to throw Sertan's way much this upcoming season. So that means, hey, can Mathis rise up to the occasion and get some takeaways? He came close last year. So for me, you look at this overall position group right now, led by Christian Parker, who's returning. To me, that makes me feel super, super comfortable about maybe the direction that this position group is heading because, hey, in today's NFL, you need dudes who could play cornerback inside and outside because the game has evolved so much that, hey, let's throw it all over the field. Let's test every blade of grass on a 100-yard field. So for me, they got a lot of guys right now, and, and I, I know we're going to get into our roster projections a little bit later on here in the show here at the position specifically, but I, it's a good problem to have right now, the good depth that they possess. I think especially when you talk about last year's pass rush unit really struggling, especially in the second half of the season. You know, you trade Bradley Chubb, Draymond Jones gets injured. All of a sudden, the pass rush becomes a, an issue down the stretch of the season. Remember, we've said this before, only three sacks in the final three games of last year. I think when you look at how good the coverage was from this team and the lack of overall pass rush as the season wore along, it didn't seem like the coverage got any worse. So to me, Cody, you've got guys at this cornerback position who are not only growing in their you know abilities and obviously just kind of getting their feet wet in the NFL. You've got a great position coach. You've got uh, these guys are all on rookie contracts, but now you've got this idea that my gosh, what if the pass rush gets better? Like, what can these guys do making plays on the ball if the pass rushers are getting more heat on the quarterback and they're able to kind of break on the ball or they're able to be a little bit more aggressive? They've been so good these last couple of years without a tremendous pass rush. So when is the last time the Broncos even had a guy with double-digit sacks, right? So it's been a while since there's been that kind of a force off the edge or even on the interior to really be able to make these coverage guys as effective as possible. But that doesn't get considered often when you talk about, well, why didn't Damari Mathis have an interception this rookie season? Well, you, nobody really factors in how good the pass rush was. But, I mean, it, it's not to blame anything. It's just to say, hey, it could be even better this year with a better pass rush. 100%. I think Justin Simmons is a great example of, hey, even though the pass rush wasn't there, quarterbacks are still throwing the ball, and he was getting you know takeaways tied for the lead league in interceptions despite missing five games. Sertan, obviously, two interceptions last season. He got one covering D-hop. So we'll see how things play out here this upcoming season. We're going to dive deep into some position battles. We're going to dive deep into some specific position battles at the cornerback position at Broncos country. If you're attending training camp, you need to keep your eye on these players when they're on the field, when they're getting reps. We'll dive deeper than that on today's episode, Locked on Broncos. Our partners at eBay Motors have teamed up with Locked On Fantasy Football host Vinny Iyer to bring you some of the best fantasy picks each week, all season long. Whether you're prepping for a draft or you're scouting the waiver wire, every week we're going to provide you players that are guaranteed to fit on your roster. So with the draft prep underway for the upcoming season, let's see who Vinny has picked out for us on this week's eBay's Guaranteed Fit Fantasy Picks of the Week. Taking a look at Minnesota Vikings wide receiver Justin Jefferson went on the clock for the first overall pick in 2023 fantasy drafts. It's okay to get downright giddy about doing the gritty. That means picking Vikings wide receiver Justin Jefferson is a guaranteed fit. Over the past two seasons, Jefferson led the league in both receptions and receiving yards. He will remain a dominant number one and target monster. Jefferson is a guaranteed fit to ignite the rest of your fantasy football lineup toward 
winning success. Vinny Iyer from Locked On Fantasy Football is going to help you win your fantasy championship. And eBay Motors knows a championship team is about each player being a perfect fit. Same with your vehicle. With eBay Guaranteed Fit, over 122 million parts and accessories for your vehicle right at your fingertips, you can make sure that your ride stays running smoothly. Air filters, brakes, batteries, tail lights, alternators, shocks, struts, you name it, eBay Motors has it. And they'll make sure it's the right fit for your car because eBay Guaranteed Fit helps you understand exactly what part you need for your vehicle the first time. So go forth, switch gears, crank the AC, and say goodbye to sweating if your ride needs a little fixing up. Because now you know you'll always be set up for success from the get-go with eBay Guaranteed Fit. Everything your vehicle is calling for is just a click away for the parts and accessories that fit your vehicle. Just look for the green check. Get the right parts, the right fit, and the right prices at ebaymotors.com. Let's ride. eBay guarantee fit only available to U.S. customers. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. What are the top position battles at the cornerback position in 2023 for the Denver Broncos? And hey, who may be some roster sleepers to look at? We're going to talk about that, and we want to hear from you as well. Drop your names in the comments. Drop some position battles in the comments, and thank you for everybody that's listening to Locked on Broncos, wherever you listen, or if you're watching on YouTube, thank you for watching with us. Thank you for engaging in the comments. We appreciate you so much. And do us a favor, subscribe to this channel. We're on the road to 10K on YouTube. And of course, we appreciate you being part of that. And we appreciate you subscribing wherever and however you listen. So Cody, I know that I love to get alerts when my favorite podcasts come out. So hey, if that's you for Locked on Broncos, do that. Go ahead and do that. It's free for you to do, and it helps out the show, and we appreciate that, so thank you. And Cody, position battles for the Denver Broncos at the cornerback position. I know this is your area of expertise, the defensive backfield. I know you watch these guys closely. I know you have some good relationships with some of these guys out there, specifically in the defensive backfield, including the coaches. So tell me, what from your observations at OTAs, mini camp, just as you look over the depth chart as you're putting together your training camp previews for Mile High Sports, what position battles are you most looking forward to at cornerback for the Denver Broncos? Yeah, this is a great one because I feel like there are several position battles that are going to take place specifically at cornerback. And look, there's other positions as well. That's what we're going to get deep into in our training camp position previews that will lead everybody in Broncos country directly up to the start of training camp. That's why you make Lockdown Broncos your first listen of the day. But looking at it, I think we all know, hey, Patrick Stan, Damari Mathis, these are the top two guys right now on the depth chart perception-wise heading into training camp. But who are some of the guys behind them that are competing not necessarily for a roster spot. There's going to be some players who are competing for a spot, but mainly it's competing for depth. Where's the depth placement here going to be for this upcoming season? I think one thing we can start off with is Jaquan McMillan versus third round pick Riley Moss. I think this is a great one because as we saw and we've talked about here on the show, Jaquan McMillan has had an under the radar, impressive OTAs, mandatory minicamp. Riley Moss has made good progress during his time on the field as well, which I think is important to highlight. But I think we also have asked the question here on the show, like, do the Broncos need Riley Moss to play a lot of defense this upcoming season as a rookie? Do they Are they in a place where they need that? And I think that's a question we're waiting to have answered. But Jaquan McMillan building off of a strong performance, getting a guaranteed NFL start against some really prolific guys like Keenan Allen, Mike Williams, holding his own and making plays on the football and also showing he could play inside and outside. I think that puts him in a position where, hey, okay, we want to see what this guy can do here in training camp and in preseason. Can he continue to build on that? Whereas you have Riley Moss, hey, we traded up in the third round to get him. We like some of the things he can contribute. And look, I think regardless, both these guys, if they're on the roster, they're going to play special teams too. But who can maybe work their way up the depth chart? Jaquan McMillan, Riley Moss, to me, I'm excited to see this one specifically play out during Broncos camp. And I can't wait to see that as well because you talk about ascending players like Jaquan McMillan and somebody who may not be on everybody's radar, but then all of a sudden the training camp updates are going to start pouring in and all of a sudden it's going to be, oh, Jaquan McMillan had an interception today. He had a nice pass breakup today. He had another interception on day th I mean, that's just kind of the trajectory of how these things go that gets you excited about these young players, especially when you finish the season strong like he did last year. I'm excited for that. And Cody, you and I were talking about this before the show started recording today. I'm kind of wondering, in the starting lineup right now, obviously Pat Sertan's job is not in danger of any sort. 
And Damari Mathis, I think we pretty clearly pencil him in, or maybe even you're sharpieing him in already for the other outside corner spot in the nickel there, K1 Williams. I noticed that Pro Football Focus posted an article, and of course, their grades are not the end-all, be-all by any means. I did notice, though, that they, they posted an article that Isang Bassi was ranked above, one spot above K1 Williams in their nickel corner rankings from last year. Broncos bought, brought Isang Bassi back this offseason. Do you think there's any chance that he could be their top option in the nickel, given how well he played in the opportunity that he had last year? Yeah, that's a great question. Uh, you know, I'd say based on my general vibe, my observation from OTAs and minicamp, I don't think that's the case. But once again, like K1 is a guy who how many how many injuries did he have on, on the depth chart? I mean, on the injury report last year. But this is a guy who tore his meniscus, had it fixed, came back in two weeks. Like that to me, I mean, Sarah is unbelievable. Like I can't even fathom ever doing that. But this is a guy who played through the various injuries. Obviously, played with the club and the cast, and still. Real in a one-handed interception against the Jacksonville Jaguars. You can make the argument and in terms of run defense from the slot position. He's arguably their best guy. But a saying Bassey in those times where Kwan Williams did miss time, he came in and he actually played really, really well, consistently well for the Broncos and was one of their top special teams guys. This is a great question, right? Because if you have a guy in a saying Bassey who's contributing, be, being one of your top core special teams players, and also a guy who maybe like has proven hey, when we go to the dime package because of how he played, you're comfortable with having K1 and Bassey inside the slot when they're in dime. That's always a possibility. Nothing, I mean, at this point, from what I've seen at OTAs and minicamp, I don't think that would be the case. But then again, Sarah, like NFL training camp is wild. We do see some wild things happen. So I don't want to get into any absolutes here. I think anything is possible. I think so too. Uh, that's keeping an open mind going into training camp, always a healthy practice. And you've obviously got back end of the roster guys. Like what about undrafted free agent Art Green, right? Because he was given a pretty big guarantee uh, after the draft by the Broncos. Almost kind of felt like they would have graded him as a draftable player. So kind of makes his roster standing interesting with guys like maybe Delonte Hood or maybe Fion Hicks, a, a seventh round pick from last year's draft class as well. I wonder where do those guys kind of stand in terms of are they – more so competing for practice squad positioning, or is there a chance that we could see any one of those three guys maybe make the 53-man roster? Yeah, I think there's a possibility. I think maybe there's a chance for one or maybe two of these guys to, to maybe be on the active roster because you need a lot of cornerbacks. If you suffer an injury, you are at dire straits if you lose one of your starters and you don't have enough guys. I mean, the Broncos found themselves in that situation with Vance Joseph. What was it back in was it 2018 exactly where they had all these cornerbacks? One guy that they brought in got ejected for throwing a punch. Bradley Roby ended up slicing his tongue and had to get out. It forced Justin Simmons to play corner during that game. I, yeah. I remember that specifically. It was against the Cleveland Browns during yeah. that game. But, uh, you know, I think for Art Green, Delate Hood, this is going to be an interesting one to follow because Art Green is an undrafted rookie for agent. The Broncos paid him a significant amount of money to be on the roster here in terms of an undrafted signing bonus. You look at Delonte Hood, a guy who was on the active roster toward the end of last season due to some of the injuries, signed a futures contract after the season concluded, got good footwork, and has made some plays as well during OTAs and minicamp. So I think realistically, I'd say between those three guys, Green, Hood, and, F and Fion Hicks, I think these guys are going to compete for one spot on the 53-man roster. And then the other guys, if they don't make the roster, will probably try to be practice squad guys. I know Denver is high on them a little bit, and if it's not Art Green, I imagine he'll probably be on the practice squad. So we'll, we'll see how things play out. I mean, it's just right now it's so hard to, to look at maybe what everything's going to look like because pads haven't come on yet. We're going to see that. But your back end guys, these are the guys who are probably going to get the most playing time at the position throughout the NFL preseason. So for me, I'm excited to watch. And we'll have to maybe keep a little bit of a, a tally chart going in week by week for the three-week stretch of the NFL preseason. Broncos country, though, there are these are the position battles we're highlighting here for Broncos training camp. If you're going to be there, let us know which position battle in terms of cornerback between which players you're most looking forward to seeing. Is there a wild card? Did we miss something? Let us know in the YouTube comments. If you're watching, tweet us on social media at Cody work NFL at Sarah Bettinger at lockdown Broncos, wherever you get your podcast. If you're listening there, we're going to continue the discussion here as we share maybe our roster projection at the position for cornerback going into the regular season. What might it look like? You're going to get that much more on today's episode. Lockdown Broncos. 
Real quick, let me go tell you, check out the Locked On NFL podcast, free and available wherever you get your podcasts, and also available on YouTube if you want to watch the local experts on the biggest stories. Locked On local coverage is wrapping things up. You listen to Locked On Broncos every single day for all your Broncos fix, but if you want a little bit of the national picture, what's going on around the NFL from other experts, make sure you check out Locked On NFL on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts. What will the Broncos cornerback room look like going into the regular season? Sarah and myself, we're going to share our thoughts. We want to hear from you as this show goes on here on today's episode. Locked on Broncos real quick. Just want to say thank you so much, Broncos country, for tuning in, making us your first listen of the day every single day. We are 50 subscribers away from 10,000 on YouTube. So if you're a brand new viewer and you're watching this on YouTube, or if you're a listener and you haven't watched on YouTube, do us a favor, go hit that subscribe button so you can watch us on your phone, on your computer, or even on your smart TV. Pull up Lockdown Broncos in the morning while you make your coffee, you have breakfast, you get ready for work, or in the evening when you're winding down. We appreciate you so much for making us part of your day every single day. Sarah, this is always the fun part, right? Maybe projecting how a room is going to look. And I feel like when we look at cornerback, you, I, I feel like it's easier to maybe project based on, okay, outside corner and then slot corner. How are things going to pan out? How many guys are you going to keep? Because every position, how many guys you keep at one position may impact you as a coach and as a personnel department as how many guys you can keep at another position. To me, that's the challenge of building a roster in training camp. And after the NFL preseason, you have to make some tough decisions for some guys and hope that, hey, that they clear waivers so that they can come back. I mean, remember last year, Mike Purcell was one guy who was cut and it was more of a formality because they're like, hey, we believe we can get him back. And because he didn't have to go through the waiver process because he's a veteran, we're going to bring Purcell back into the mix here. You don't necessarily get that luxury with some of your young guys, though. So that's where the gamble really comes in during this whole process. Uh, for me, and I, and I want to hear your thoughts. Well, I'm going to share maybe who I project to make the roster. I'm curious to, for how you project the roster be made. For outside cornerback, I've got Patrick Sertan. I've got Damari Mathis. I've got Jaquan McMillan and Riley Moss rounding out the four guys listed as the outside depth there that position specifically and then on the slot on the inside i've got kwan williams and i've got a saying bassey there as well so for the broncos six total cornerbacks going into the regular season do you think it's going to be six do you think it's going to be more what is your projection i like the number six there i think that's a uh, pretty solid i think you keep six corners maybe four or five safeties we'll see what kind of happens there but the the only question mark I think for us is Tremont Smith. Where does he fit into this mix? A free agent acquisition, obviously dubbed an elite special teams guy, but maybe not necessarily in the plans at the cornerback position. That's kind of what we're questioning right now. He got a two point five million dollar guarantee in free agency from the Broncos. They don't get any cap relief if they do cut him. They would have to trade him to get cap relief. So. Kind of an interesting player to monitor as we're talking about guys that you should be watching during training camp. I think Tremont Smith and the contributions that he's able to make as a cornerback will be significant because we know he can play special teams. We know he's a good gunner, had a, a number of forced fumbles last year on punt coverage. He can return kicks. He's got speed. I mean, he, he's an interesting player but it, it seems like even over the course of his nfl career dating back to his time in kansas city and houston he maybe doesn't contribute as much at the cornerback position or maybe he's more of like a versatile defensive back they float around the formation i that's why i'm saying we got to keep an eye on this guy because he's that one guy that i think really right now changes the the 53 man roster projection a little bit because the six guys that you mentioned all six worthy of being on the roster so if you only keep six guys who was the odd man out and why i think that's a great question how do, how do you maybe see it playing out like if you had to give a projection for cornerback what is your projection how do you see things playing out well, I think if if all those young guys play well, right? If you have Jaquan McMillan, who he's showing, hey, there's some progression here. There's there, This is a dude, right? This could be the next Chris Harris Jr. type guy. You can't cut him, right? And, and same with Isang Bass. He was playing at a high level. He's a younger player. I think the decision may come down to Isang Bassey and K1 Williams there in the nickel. And you and I talked about this before the show. Like K1 Williams would be a shocker of a roster cut. He is a veteran in the second of a two-year deal, minimal guaranteed money left. The Broncos would save $2.1 million if they did cut or trade him here before rosters are finalized. So 
that could be one of those surprises that's like, dang, like Kwan Williams, he was the starter last year. And now it's like, okay, who could the starter be? Could it be the Broncos would have to feel really, really good about a couple things, right? They'd have to feel really good about either Isang Bassey or Jaquan McMillan, or maybe even Riley Moss there in the slot in place of Kwan Williams. And then they would have to say, you know, we just can't live without Tremont Smith on special teams. He's he's that guy. Like he is he's a core special teamer. He's going to make a huge difference in the the hidden yardage game, and he's going to be doing all those sorts of things. We can live without K1 and and put in a guy like Bassey or put in Jaquan McMillan or Riley Moss. They would have to. That's got to be the plan, right? If they're going to cut somebody like K1 Williams, it's kind of like remember a few years back when they cut Todd Davis, and everybody's like. What are you doing, you morons? Or they cut TJ Ward as well. And everybody's thinking like, why would you do this so close to the season? You know, it's kind of one of those types of move where it's like there's cap room to be had there, but it, it's got to be these young guys stepping up that create it as opposed to just saying, hey, no, we need to save the two million k ones out. It's got to be young guys stepping up into that spot and making sure that they're able to play at a high level. It's a great question, and I think in a situation like that, it would be a great gamble by the Broncos to be able to do that because essentially you're asking these young guys, like, hey, you're going to have an elevated pressure on you in terms of, hey, you need to come in right away. You need to perform at a high level because, hey, we simply we had to save money, and if we're getting rid of a guy like Kwan who is an impact player for us defensively, then I think that you know you run the risk of running through some of those rookie pains. But then again, it's the NFL. It's ultra competitive. We see guys rise and elevate all the time. I'm curious to see maybe how everything pans out and when roster cuts happen, what formulates here for the Broncos, specifically at the cornerback position. Broncos country, what do you think about the Broncos cornerback roster? If you're watching on YouTube, write in a comment who you think the outside corners who are going to be the starters, the depth, and then also inside the slot. Who's going to make up the starter? Who's going to be a depth option? How many guys are they going to carry there? We're eager for your thoughts as well and can't wait to interact with you in the comment section or on social media at Cody Work NFL, at Sir Benninger, at Lockdown Broncos. Well, Broncos country, that'll wrap up today's episode of the show, our Broncos training camp position preview, looking at cornerback. And for all you everydayers, tomorrow's episode of the show, we're going to dive deep into wide receiver, one of the deepest positions right now on the team, who are guaranteed locks for the roster and who might be on the bubble here at this point in training camp as it approaches. We'll dive deeper to that and much more on tomorrow's brand new episode, Locked on Broncos.